be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. I think now seems like the perfect time to be looking at other potentials to invest in, especially when the markets are so uncertain and there's a lot of news coming out that they could crash again. Today, we're gonna to look at how to find the best properties to invest in, look at an example, and look at the calculations on how to understand the figures on buying a property and what to look for. I've called on the help of a special guest today. It's a friend from Sydney, Ravi from Search Property Australia. He's a buyer's agent in Sydney and helps people all over the country find investment properties in regional and metro areas. This video will give you a full overview of what to expect when it comes time to buy a property. So you can get a good feel for if this is a type of investment that you'd be looking for at these uncertain times in the market. Now remember, this is not financial advice. It's for education purposes only. I've also got the timestamps in the description down below so you can skip forward or back to any particular section to do further research on it at a future date. Just be sure to save it in your watch lists on YouTube. If you'd like to find out more about property investing in Australia, I've got Ravi's links in the description down below for his YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to that after you've finished watching this video. I've also got a video on his channel talking about technical analysis. So without further ado, like up the video before we get started, subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated with future videos. Now let's dive into the interview with Ravi. Okay, guys, so I've got Ravi on the channel to help us out with our property questions. Ravi, thank you so much for jumping on. It's been a long time coming. Let us know a little about your channel and what it is you do down in Sydney. Yeah, awesome. Look, Jason, it's been awesome to finally get on the channel. I know we've been yeah. talking a lot offline. When it comes to property, uh, I'm a buyer's agent. I'm based in Sydney. Unlike most others, I actually don't focus any of the buying opportunities in Sydney at the moment. I'm looking at regional centers and I'm looking at about four or five of the states uh, across Australia. So I've got a channel, Search Property TV. Uh, we launched cool. only about six months ago and it's all aimed at getting people started with a plan and looking at helping them uh, alleviate those stresses of trying to research. Uh, and we, we do all that back end work, but also a lot of coaching and mentoring. Sweet. I hope and that, that was helps. good for a summary. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does because it helps cut through the sensationalized crap about all the different news pieces that we see online. And if you actually want to go and make money from the property market, go and see someone who's actually doing it at the moment. I've got the link in the description for Ravi's channel when it comes to buying property. I've got the, the post on, on my channel. I asked the guys, yes. yep. what, yeah, what, how do we buy? How do we find the right properties to buy? Two things, research and calculating the, the numbers. I'll throw you on the spot here. Uh, how do we find the right property to buy? And we can start with the regional stuff, which is your specialty at the moment. And we can talk about major cities as well, if, if that's something that, that works out. So yeah, take yeah, it away. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think when it comes to research, and I get asked this you know, every day when I'm taking these calls with clients, uh, it essentially comes down to the bare knuckles of it, which is goals and strategy. Uh, when we're looking at goals and when we're looking at a strategy, that is really going to dictate where you start your research process. Um, you know, people think that because real estate's easy, uh, you know, I could go downstairs and we'll probably see three or four for lease or for sale signs. Uh, there's a lot of research that goes into this and you can't just go, oh, well, I'll pick up this and I'll pick up that because I think it's a good idea. Uh, so essentially when you're researching property, the first fundamental part of it is trying to figure out what's in it for you and what your end goal is. Once we know what the end goal looks like, that's when you can go and start looking at different areas, different suburbs. I'm looking at, okay, these particular suburbs are going to give me this sort of return. That's where I'll start targeting my next purchase. We'll go through the bits and pieces, like breaking down the, yep. the research and whatnot at a high level, but then we'll do an example of how these numbers work, looking at the calculations, or we'll do it, and we'll do an example of what the research looks like. Where would you first yeah, awesome. start when it comes to research? That's a big one as well. Like I live on the Gold Coast or I used to live in Brisbane. I just started looking in that area. Is that something that we can do as a first step when it comes to research? So a lot of people will look in their backyard. What I mean by that is familiar areas, right? So they'll look at suburbs that they're familiar with. And generally that's a good place to start knowing the fundamentals of why an area would grow. So something like Queensland, uh, something like Gold Coast or Brisbane, you're looking at going, okay, where are we at in the cycle? Because there's a lot of chatter, there's a lot of noise around there being 
some really good growth numbers there. The cycle and is something so, that we'll have to look at as well. Sorry to cut in because the cycle is yeah, a yeah, no part. good. <laughs> I've got videos on my channel about the property cycle and, and so do you as well. Uh, we always look yep. at the 18.6 year cycle. That helps as the ground post, you know, like the, the starting point in the ground. If you can understand that, then we can apply this stuff. And so what often, we look for? like, you know, uh, I guess what you're looking for is um, things like infrastructure. You're looking at government spending. So things like, you know, if, if the government's just announced that they're now going to put in a new school or they're putting in a new development in that area uh, or a new industry is coming in or a major player, you know that with that will come a lot of jobs. And for the jobs, you know, are we looking at just people coming into that area for a short term and then they fly back out or are they going to be there for a, a six to 10 year project? Then we're also looking at going, okay, well, if we're looking at, at, a, at a macro level, you know, where are we at with migration? Where are we at with the, the major spending by the government? Mm -hmm. But then it comes down to something so fundamental, which is supply and demand. It's so simple, yet it basically will uh, mean whether an asset price will go up or whether it will go down. Uh, from a both capital growth perspective and as well as a cash flow perspective. Give us an example. Yep, Give go. us an example because there's a lot of big words there at the moment. It's like looking at the spending, looking at this, looking at that and the numbers, da, da, da. I, I just went with Brisbane because that's where I was from and I'm like, I know it's all going to be good. That's the kind of way I looked at it and it ended up being <laughs> all right. I think the cycle helped. Yep. But give us an example of an area that you like to look of and what you have found compared to an area that's not so good. Just high level, quick numbers, let's throw it out yep. there so we can move on to the for calculations. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So I guess when we're looking at this sort of stuff, it's there's also another level to it, but let's say something like, you know, in, in the Western suburbs of Sydney, uh, there's a lot of infrastructure spending. They're trying to, you know, build this new airport out. Uh, but what happens in that case is that you need to look at how much supply is coming onto the market too. So you're looking at how many more houses are coming in, how many more units are coming in. Um, Where do I get these details Whereas when from? you're looking, the best place to start, I think, is council websites. So when we're looking at our own backyards, uh, visit the council website, see what their plans are, what their strategies are, and then you can go down a rabbit hole. And this mm. is where it depends on how much of a passion you have for this stuff. Do you whereas, have a checklist for all this? Uh, I do, I do, and it's something I can share. I've got a Facebook I've been, group that I just started. A beautiful. private I've been Facebook cutting you group. off so much, but I'm like, I, I'm just <laughs> overloaded with how much. I'm like, shit, okay. We've got a checklist for all of these fundamental things. That's good. That's good to know. You've got a Facebook group as well. Yes. Sorry, viewers. I know I've been cutting Ravi off a lot, but um, yeah, I just want to- I think if they're familiar with, uh, if the they're process. familiar with Gary V, it's, uh, that's the process I'm going through right now here. <laughs> yeah, Jason, Gary V. <laughs> <laughs> spitting it all out. I'm like, I, I want to get this structured. And then obviously we can go and follow your channel as well. So we had Western Sydney. Uh, we've got the details from the council websites and yep. we're sort of understanding what is what supplies coming onto the market and what sort of demand may be coming out there that they're anticipating. Now we've, partic we've picked an area, Western Sydney. Mm -hmm. How do we pick the right property then? Apartments, houses, yep. land? So again, come, comes back down to supply and demand. And I think... The easiest way to get started on this, something like this, is if you go onto realestate.com.au, uh, you can see how many people are viewing that area. Is it a high demand area? Are people searching for this? Because you may think, oh, it's a town near a beach. I really want to live there, so everyone else will. But unfortunately, that's not how it works, right? We can get emotional yeah. about this. Um, but investing is a very financial game. It, you need to be practical. Um, so I would say you go through to realestate.com.au, and try and get familiar with looking looking at suburbs and looking at what those numbers mean. So I think we can go into calculating what those numbers look like, right? All right, cool. So yeah, we've kind of got we've we've figured out an area and we've got some high level fundamentals of why we want to go to this area and what particular product it is that we want in this area. And when I say product, it means is it an apartment? Is it a townhouse? Is it a is it a house? Is it a house with some land that we can subdivide? So we've we've covered all these things now, and now we're like all right, let's go and look at some numbers. We're just going to do high level stuff and yep. future videos will go into some more detail. But yeah, let's go at some high level yep. stuff. You've picked a particular product. Let's give us some numbers. Yep. So let's say for instance, um, you know, there's a lot of chat around what a deposit looks like. Um, mm. So generally a 10% deposit will get you into a property, right? Now, when we're looking at, you know, growth areas and growth corridors, at the moment, there are regional centers that are doing amazingly well. They, they are going through what I call is a, a proper boom cycle. 
And so in these areas, you could actually get a property, a three bedroom house for about $220,000. Okay. Wow. So 220,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so obviously, you know, when you're, when you're living in the capital city, you know, I live in Sydney. And so when you're looking at and talking to people who probably want to purchase a one bedroom unit for 600K, now it becomes a very attractive prospect. High level numbers, 10% deposit uh, is, you know, $22,000. You've got stamp duty, which unfortunately you have to pay. Uh, it's just mm. the state tax. Each state has a different tax there, uh, but it's about $8,000. So you've got 22 plus 8,000. And if you're going to go with a buyer's agent, um, then it's going to be a cost for the buyer's agent, roughly about 15,000. And that in itself will get you into a property. Of course, there's costs like, you know, getting your pre-inspection, pre-purchase inspections. So pest and building reports. What they are in layman terms is pretty much experts going into the property to see what's inside the walls. And so a cost for those things plus conveyancing someone to do contracts uh, to get into something like that, I usually say forty-five to fifty-five thousand dollars will get you into a property that's probably cash flow positive. Uh, and I guess you want me to break down what what I mean by that? Just high level, because the guys high level okay. understand <laughs> dividends from stocks. You know, we don't run stocks on negative okay, dividends. Yep. So positive cash flow is really just uh, the rent you receive after all of your costs you still have a passive income, a positive cash flow after you've paid for all of your expenses. Uh, that's essentially a, a really good place to be when you're young, especially because mm. you know, you're limited to how much you're making through your salary and your income. Well, that pretty much breaks that part down. Last thing I want to have a look at is how do you know that that was the right property to get and understanding, if you, if you can do high level numbers, otherwise we'll save it for another video, when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, positive cash flow, like understanding those numbers of a property. So I guess the quickest way to do it, uh, something I do straight away, as soon as I see a, a listing or I get you know uh, an email from an agent, is usually what you do is you get your rent. So let's mm -hmm. say it's 200 bucks a week. You'd this go 200 a by- For a 220 yep. K house? Oh, okay. So for a 220 place, that's probably gonna rent for about 300 bucks. Right? All right. So $300 a week, you multiply that by 52 weeks and you'll get a figure. That figure divided by the actual purchase price will give you a yield. And that yield, uh, if that's looking at anywhere from about six to about 8% yield, uh, you'll be in positive cash flow territory. That's probably the All quickest right. way I could explain it. <laughs> Let's do it here. 300 a week multiplied by 52 weeks is 15,600. I'm dividing this by the, the purchase price. Yep, correct. Oop, divide by 220,000. I've got a yield of 7.1%. Awesome. So that cool. right there will tell you that uh, that's a positive cash flow. And we can look at those numbers uh, in more detail in future videos. Guys, let us know in the description. No, in the comment section, if you want to hear more about, <laughs> if you want to hear more about figures on properties, how to find them in different areas. I know the viewers are all from uh, Victoria, all over the country, New South Wales, Queensland. Uh, and we're looking at regional stuff as well. And I know Toowoomba and those sorts of areas have been pretty attractive of late. Comments down below if you want to know more about the property space. I think we, we can wrap it up shortly. Do you want to add one final thing? Thoughts for viewers, what they should do, what you know, first things? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's the fact that you need to understand. You need to have goals. You need to have a strategy. But you also mm. need to understand the fundamentals and not get carried away with what the media is you know, headlining out there for clickbait articles. Uh, essentially, we are in a great time. And again, property cycles, a different video that we can talk about. But essentially, sure. we are in a mid-cycle slowdown. This is not the big crash that everyone's thinking we may have. Uh, mm -hmm. And people are thinking the world's collapsing. It really isn't. It's actually a great time to really get educated, upgrade your financial literacy. Uh, and of course, you can do that on Jason's channel and you can do it on my channel. Um, we're, we're all mates, so it doesn't really matter. Subscribe to both and you get a double whammy. <laughs> yeah. You get some property details. Links are in the description for that. Thank you so much, Ravi, for coming on. Uh, I'd love to do some more videos with you. So I'm reaching out to you guys, the viewers, to let us know in the comments what else it is you want to learn about the property market. Like the video, you know the deal. Subscribe. And I will catch you guys at the next video. Thank you so much, Ravi. Thanks so much for having time. me. Thanks, guys. See you Cheers. later. Peace out until next time.